just to show you how powerful these storms were, they, it took a piece of wood like this. It split it in half. The other half went shooting straight into the side of the wall here. And just to show you a little bit more of that damage, this is a truck. You could see it was broken here. And then the windshield here on the side also gone. Now, there were eight families that were affected that lived in that building that you see there that they're cleaning up. They will have to be moved to other apartments. We're live near Blackwell during I-240. Patty Santos, KOCO 5 News. Well, Jessica, definitely some high water out here. Take a look at this parking lot right now. It looks more like a lake. And if you'll take a look down here, you can see the water is coming up past my ankles. Now, this is the parking lot of a movie store. But you know what? This water isn't stopping people from coming in and dropping off their DVDs. And this business was actually prepared for this. Take a look. They have sandbags right out front of this door to keep that water from coming in. Jessica and Paul, the community truly came together tonight to show their strength, many of them wearing this ribbon that was handmade by an OSU staff member. Yeah, the water usually reaches all the way up to this bridge, but with the lake not getting enough water in the last year, you can see the levels have dropped significantly. That is how a police officer patrolling this lake was able to see a vehicle right out there. And you can see this is a piece of the truck that was pulled out today. Police telling us in the recent months they have pulled out four vehicles from this lake. We're live at Lake Stanley Draper. Yeah, that's right, Marky. There were several agencies. They are searching for him, including local police, Oklahoma Highway Patrol, and U.S. Marshals. Now, several of those agencies were here on the scene just moments ago where two of his relatives were found dead. Now you can see right through these trees, they were found in that house across the tape, right through there, the light shining on it. Jessica, take a look to my right. You can see I'm surrounded by Christmas lights and decorations, but on the other side of the yard, you can see it goes dark with just stakes and duct tape left behind. Now, Pinka has filed a police report, but she does tell me she's willing to look the other way as long as that light up Mustang is returned to her safely. Reporting live in Edmond tonight, Ariana Garza, KOCO 5 News. Valibrate 27 County, can you show me on duty? Hi, hey, welcome back to shift. Hey, it feels good. It's kind of exciting. <laughs> I don't know, when I put on the uniform today and knew I was coming back from my first official day, I was like, it feels good. I, I mean, it really does. As he started slowing down, he finally decided to get off right here. 
right under the underpass. And we, this vehicle stopped a little bit up front there. Uh, when I got out to approach his vehicle, that's when he took fire on me and I ran to the back to take cover. I remember getting my radio and uh, asking the good Lord to let it work properly. <laughs> Yeah, I told myself and my wife, if I made everything back and was able to get back out there and do this job again, I would do it. I know there's days that we all have hard times out here as police officers, especially nowadays how things are, but to me it's uh, a joy that I like doing. I mean, it's comforting to me that I can get out here and I can help others. Water is unforgiving. It's not gonna care. And so if you go underneath the water and don't come back up, then it's an unfortunate situation and a life jacket can prevent that from happening. We try to give everybody an opportunity to be informed of the law and then we make friendly contacts with them and we don't like to surprise people. And in our lake, if you're under the age of 13, anywhere in the lake and you're in the water, you have to have a life jacket on. That is a posted regulation and a city ordinance. You can drown in very shallow water. That is why it is absolutely imperative for young people to have life jackets on. We have been given some vouchers by the company of Brahms. And if an officer catches an, uh, a kid being good and being in the water, then we have a few of those we can hand out and give them a free ice cream. Be safe, have fun. Short, that's it. I was grabbing pretty much everything I could carry that they allowed us to grab. The people in this community are always very appreciative and I, and I enjoy that. That's one of the reasons I love being here. I really have no words. I'm completely shocked. It's definitely a relief to know we'll have groceries and we can take care of their back to school shopping. There you go. It feels amazing. Just, I have no words. Excited and very, very surprised. It makes me think of how I can take care of other things, obviously. And people always like that. Um, I can pay other bills. <laughs> I'm happy about that. One more. <laughs> do to do. I think it's absolutely amazing what they do for veterans and their families. They give so much, and a lot of people don't seem to recognize that. So it's nice. I, other, than, I, other than that, I honestly don't know what to say. I don't even. I got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Neither, I don't know. Thank you, Chris. Well, Paul and Jess, I want to introduce you to a very special little girl. We're going to bring you down to her level. This is Josie, and she went to a Thunder game yesterday, and thanks to those implants, she could hear it all. Josie! Can't contain it now and certainly couldn't contain her joy at the Thunder game. Nothing but net for them and nothing but excitement for her. She is able to hear now because she just received in September her cochlear implants. Oh, the cheers, the music, and all the sounds that come with the game heard loud and clear, and it was a welcomed experience. Her painted face says it all. She loved it. Immediately was just like taking everything in. She wanted to go everywhere. Josie was a NICU baby. Her twin brother died. She survived but had hearing issues. Turns out she was diagnosed with auditory neuropathy, which is... She can hear sometimes, and then sometimes she couldn't hear at all. But those days are now far behind her, thanks to Good Doctors and Hearts for Hearing, a nonprofit organization. She's one of a wild, crazy kid. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a cookie? Um, nom, 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 nom. <laughs> her parents can't thank the Thunder, Victor Oladipo, and Hearts for Hearing for the loudest experience of her little life so far. It meant everything to us. Jesse. Mecca Ryan KOCO 5 News. This is an angler's paradise. The Blue River. It's stocked with rainbow trout from November 1st through the end of March. You can find it a short two hour drive from Oklahoma City, just north of Tishomingo, Oklahoma. And the drive is well worth it, according to local fly fishermen. Barry Schrader. Blue River is uh, just an absolute masterpiece of creation in nature. It's just miles of cascading, rippling water, uh, tree-lined banks, and, and a huge community of, of wildlife. It's just a fabulous place. There are 1,000 acres of wilderness surrounding six miles of river. 
we caught up with the Blue River Fisheries biologist Matt Gamble, who told us from November to January the trout come from Arkansas. Uh, those fish are provided by the federal government as mitigation for putting dams on Oklahoma streams and rivers. They are provided free to the state. After mid-January, Oklahoma then purchases about 14,000 pounds of additional rainbow trout. The actual contract states 11 to 14 inches, with 10% being over 14 inches but less than 24 inches. What that means is 10% of those fish are going to be trophy-sized fish. So let's see if we can get a strike here. Ooh, had a hit. Let's pull that out of his mouth. Okay, so we'll go back. So they're definitely feeding. Each stocking is generally 2,400 fish. Sometimes we double that if it's uh, like the week of Thanksgiving or um, New Year's Day, and we know that we're gonna have a big crowd, we'll double that. The Blue River is pretty diverse when it comes to access. Sometimes the water is hard to get to, but like this spot, easily accessible for the fly fishermen or even the family with little kids. Most people start out fishing for trout with just simple power bait. Just to, for the kids, just get a snoopy rod and reel and, and let them go at it. And you'd be surprised, sometimes the kids, or oftentimes the kids will outfish the adults. Fish on. Anglers can expect to catch the trout until about May when the waters become too warm. Sorry, buddy. This is the face of an abused child. We found a picture from 2005 that was Colt's school picture. Colton Clark's brother Homer knows you've only seen the smiling picture of his brother that was in the news. But he showed me another one, and he wants you to see the abuse of his baby brother. In the picture, he has a huge bruise on his arm. He's got a bruise on his eye and a bruise on his lip, and that no one ever reported it. Never reported, and the brothers were hushed by their guardians their aunt and uncle. The fear is tremendous. That's the worst part. It's you wake up every day and you just have that pit in your stomach of you're just scared. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what to expect. It's just you wake up and it's like living in hell. This photo would be Colton's final school picture. Six months after Colton disappeared, his brother Homer was rescued from the nightmare he had been living in. I was adopted. I uh, flew straight to Spain. That was the first time I'd ever been on an airplane. His adopted father treated him well, and after a couple of years, they moved back to the States, and he settled in Tennessee. And that's where we traveled to see him. Homer wanted to show us that despite the odds, he's made a success of his life. I played baseball, and uh, we won state my senior year, uh, and I was lucky enough I got a full ride to go to college. With an education behind him and new goals ahead, he landed a career in landscaping design. He's moved on, but admits it wasn't easy. There was times where I was, I mean, I was to the point of suicide. Honestly, I don't remember what it was like. I mean, to this day, I still feel a hole. That hole, his brother Colton, whose body has never been found. Would you say that's the thing that haunts you the most, is that, is that hole? Out of all of it, yeah, the, the thing that, that bothers me the most is just not, not having that other piece that completes me. He, he was definitely my other piece. He, uh... He was my strength when I had none, and I just kind of had to redirect myself. I had to figure out what was going to be my, my new purpose. The new purpose is to be a voice for the abused. You can't expect a little beat kid to come forth and tell on the 300-pound man that's beating him. That's just, that's not how little kids' minds work. And abusive adults know that. Monsters come out in the dark, and they don't always just appear right off the bat. You're not going to see the first signs right away, uh, but it's, Child abuse is a serious epidemic, and it, it takes other people to step up and, you know, to, to stop that. Homer lost his brother and had to wait a decade to see his aunt and uncle held accountable. It was so nice knowing that they would never see freedom again and that I could see it on his face and I could see it on hers. Now he's focused on a memorial and raising money, not just for Colton, but for all abused kids, to remember those who are gone and those living through it. He's got the good memories of his brother and the one picture that pushes him to reach out to the abused. Uh, you know, any kid who's ever suffered anything like this, I want them to know that people do love and care about them, and I know that they seem forgotten, but they're not. Morphine, Lortab, Percocet, prescription drugs intended to reduce pain, creating addiction and anguish.
It's an epidemic levels now of opiate overdose deaths and over prescriptions and a big problem across the nation, especially in Oklahoma. Dr. Craig Stevens leading cutting edge research at OSU's Tulsa campus on the body's response to painkillers. This is one of the main pieces of equipment. It's called a cell culture hood. We're altering the way the brain responds to the drug. His team working to stop the brain from craving pain medication. They're pinpointing the receptors responsible for triggering dependence and creating new ones. We've kind of flipped it on its head and instead of looking at the development of new drugs acting at the same old opioid receptors, we have the same drugs acting at new opioid receptors. Artificial receptors blocking the pathways to pleasure centers in the brain. The future of this research lies in a petri dish. Scientists here at OSU hope that studying the way that drugs act with these new receptors will provide a new way to treat pain without addiction. Those new receptors eventually injected through gene therapy. So this is where we actually will isolate the genes making you less likely to need drugs long term. That would be ideal. That's the holy grail in opiate research. Though it may be years away, Dr. Stevens predicts gene therapy will eventually become commonplace. We'll be seeing the real use of gene therapy common like it is now, like vaccines, I think. So maybe 20 years. And that could mean relieving your pain without the painful side effects of addiction. In Tulsa, Ariel Reshef, KOCO. Five news. Yeah, the Oklahoma Baptist Disaster Relief has more than 150 volunteers like these guys who are helping out after this ice storm. But with more than 1,400 requests for service, they're still in need of some volunteers. The reminder of a recent ice storm in Yukon can be seen and heard all around. The neighbors have all had trees that fell over their fence. Some of the hardest hit areas continue to clean up from the late November storm. Oklahoma Baptist Disaster Relief will be stationed in Yukon for the next several weeks volunteering their time. We really feel for these people. Uh, we know their hardships are going through. 160 volunteers from here and surrounding states are sleeping at this Baptist church and going out each day to surrounding communities to cut down trees and assist where needed. But the group still needs more help, especially now with more than a thousand calls for service. But certainly we will not turn away any volunteer. The cleanup is expected to take months, but volunteers with this group say they're happy to help those who need it most. Now to find out how you can volunteer like these guys, we've included a link on our KOCO mobile app. Reporting tonight in Yukon, Jonathan Cooper, KOCO 5 News. Here in Minko, the normal hustle and bustle of students in class has been replaced by employees cleaning and disinfecting the schools, all in an effort to get students back in class by next week. Empty hallways, bare classrooms, and vacant desks. It's not what you typically see on a school day in Minko. But after an alarming number of kids have come down with the flu and strep throat, the superintendent decided to cancel school for the rest of the week. As the day progressed, we lost 36 students through the day with fever. A total of 136 kids were out sick yesterday. That's 25% of the school population. Instead of those students getting behind or teachers having to reteach the material, Sims decided it would be best to cancel class until kids get well. Employees will spend the next few days cleaning and disinfecting the building. Safety and security is the number one uh, need of each student. I feel like this decision helps the safety of our students. We've got to get them well and get them back in the classrooms. 